is my uh, progress of making the bodice for the young Snow White uh, costume from Once Upon a Time. Uh, this actually took several months to make. And the only thing I think I would do differently if I was ever doing this design again is I think I would sew the sleeve in after the whole thing was put together including the front panel. The hardest thing was the sleeves because of the issue with the seam and putting it onto the ribbon and having to turn that seam over in the opposite direction to as it went in the armhole but apart from that um, I think everything went pretty well. I'm very sorry about some of the bad quality in some of these uh, videos. It's Admittedly it's not a very good camcorder. Um, I hope in the future I might be able to get one that zooms in a bit better. So, um, But if you wish to, just visit my website. Some better photos and a better written description, if that helps. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Right now onto our bodice. First of all, I was given this handy Tudor bodice that a good friend of mine made up to help follow. It's just been very helpful. And here's some ridges bone in between two layers before attaching the outside. That's why his outside fabric on the seam has ended up on the inside. But mine will be doing slightly differently, but the same principle with sandwiching the boning between two stiff layers. One being the lining. Now because I have a bit more of a bust than the uh, little girl who did the acting in the snow white dress. Uh, we've got a bit of an issue with it being quite high up on my chest and it's sticking out too far from the chest so we've had to do some darts on my pieces like so. That's just to help it curve around the bust area a bit more easily because it does have to go quite high up Now I can't stress enough just how many days of headaches it has taken to work this out. But basically I've cut my corset cotille a lot shorter than this is going to be my lining. Basically because I'll have this trim sticking up at the end which will be on the front of the bodice and I'll be allowing a centimetre turnover at the top so by the time I took a centimetre off the top and then the width of that you end up with it being like that much shorter the centimetre plus the width of your trim and I didn't want the cortile going inside behind the trim I just wanted the trim to be lined only and we'll be just uh, sewn down to the front piece later on very confusing I know but it will make sense I promise now black tool teal wasn't really a good thing to use but my sewing shop had run out and I had black left. Could have done with a lighter colour like beige or white but anyway I've been using his um, pattern pieces as a guide and on this guide it shows you where to put the boning. So we've been transferring those markings onto this which had taken best part of about an hour just to do the front panel the very careful measuring some of them are like two distances two centimeters apart some of them are only one centimeter apart and they're all different heights because you've got your bust area here and they'd slightly start to fan out towards the side seams The next thing I'll be doing is sewing this onto this and then sewing boning channels all the way around where I've done my marks and then sliding my boning up through the bottom up inside after. So that's what I'm going to go and do now just on this front piece to make sure it's all working out well. I've now sewn my channels onto my first front piece. Like so. I 
I've also done the same on the next piece that has to be joined to the front. On here I've only got three channels. Let's turn that over so you can see it a bit better. As you can see this one going off slightly at an angle. And that just leaves the back piece. Okay, this is what it looks like so far. I've also been inserting my bone in just to see how it looks. The only thing holding these two layers together at the moment is these sewing channels. And of course I've actually now gone ahead and sewn down the side seams. So this is what it looks like on the other side. My boning strips are approximately 7.7, sorry, 7.5 millimeters wide. I've made my channels a centimeter wide. So I can literally just slot them in from the bottom. I already measured how long I wanted each one to be before I even put the whole thing together. So I'm literally just bowl sliding that up right away to the top. Like so. That really does give it a lot of extra strength. So it should be quite solid and quite stiff by the time I finished. Next thing I've got to do is attach my back pieces. Which I'm going to do now. Just remember when you're doing your back pieces, I've only just pinned this, but make sure you pin you pin the right pink side to the right side. You don't want to attach the pink to the other side. Put it that way up. Okay, I've now sewn all my pieces together for the two layers, including the back seams at this point. This is the trim I'll be using for my bodice on the photograph here. I've got a really wide trim and I don't know if you can just see it there, but there's like these little pink loops that looks like a piece of lace underneath. So I have this trim, which is one and a quarter wide, that's inches, and this dainty pink lace trim I've got is... If you measure it from the scallop one, it's about a centimetre wide. And this will be going something like that. So you just see these little loops peeking out the top. These are my properly measured pieces of the trim. This will be the front and then two pieces for the back. I've sewn the lace on to the edge on the inside so it just sticks out along the top and I've done that for all my pieces. Okay next up we've sewn the trim to the top edges of your outer fabric. So that's one back section this is the front. And then the other back section. Like so. To put the sleeve in, we need to measure around the armhole to get a length of ribbon cut. So you need to measure, uh, sorry, uh, put the bodice on where you want it to finish and then measure the armhole opening all the way around and then add on 
about an inch or a couple of centimeters onto that for um, turning the seam. Okay, moving on to the sleeves, I tried two different designs. Uh, the first one was this more curved one, traditional sort of puffy sleeve shape. But then we found it was too curved and we were having issues trying to curve this around the corner at the top of the arm because as you notice there's no armhole around the top of the arm across the shoulder. So we spent quite a few days working out various methods. In the end I've come up with this shape which will be altered again in a second. Just to show you it's this shape. And I took it from this pattern. After doing our mock-up earlier, our practice run, we found that we needed to change this angle and make do a slight curve there, as opposed to it coming in and then going up like that. So hopefully you can just about see the difference there. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut the other sleeves the same. This is now the new sleeve shape and to stop it fraying we've overlocked the edges on the overlocking machine or you can just turn the edges over as normal to neaten an edge if you want to do it that way. Right, I've now gone ahead and decorated my sleeves. This is my own choice, you can use whatever you want to use. I've used little 5mm cup sequins in silver, uh, some stick-on stars, and these are crystals that I made my own design with. You can do whatever you wish. And I've also ran a gathering stitch across the top and the bottom, ready to gather my sleeve in in a short while. Next up you've got your measurement. I'm using a piece of pink ribbon which measures 49 centimeters long. Next you need to fold the ribbon in half and mark with a pin my halfway point on the ribbon. Next take your sleeve and find your halfway point on your sleeve and mark it with a pin. Okay, next you need to take your ribbon, take the centre point of your ribbon and line it up with the centre point on the sleeve and pin the two together. Next, go to the other end, take the end of your ribbon and pin that like so to that edge and the same with the other side as well. Next, starting from the centre, halfway point, pull some thread out, like so, and start gathering one side of the top edge of your sleeve. Once you've gathered the one side of your sleeve, then start pinning the ribbon down in place and holding all those gathers together and then start gathering the other side. Next, after you've gathered the other side, continue pinning the ribbon down in place and then sew all the way along on this edge. 
Okay, I'd now sew my ribbon all the way along as close to the bottom edge as possible, which was a little tricky because the ribbon's a bit thin, but there we go. Next fold your sleeve in half, good side to good side, and we want to sew the seam down the side here. Right, I've now sewn down the side seam. Next, put in the sleeve into the armhole. You have to take the good side of your sleeve face down and match up the seam on your sleeve to the seam on your bodice. Then try and pin them together in place as close as possible. Next, start pinning the edge of your sleeve to near the edge of your bodice, like so. Doesn't matter if this edge of your sleeve slightly overlaps the bodice underneath and they don't match quite. Next, start pinning the edge the edge of the other sleeve along the same way as you did the other side. Okay, this is the uh, sleeve. We're just trying it in at the moment. It's only pinned and it will be sewn in eventually. But this is what it should finish up looking like. Next, making your cuff. I've cut a piece that's about 30 centimeters long about eight centimeters wide but it will depend on the measurement of your arm which you need to do first this needs to be double the width because you'll be folding it over this is my lining piece which was cut the same as the outer piece of chiffon we folded it in half and pressed it with the iron and then we're doing the same with the other piece Next we need to pin the chiffon to the lining piece uh, just to stop it moving around. Next fold your cuff in half and sew a seam down the edge. Next we need to find the halfway point of the cuff on the sleeve and then just put a pin to mark it. Then go to your cuff and do the same. Find its halfway point and put a pin to mark it. All these other pins here are just to hold the two fabrics together temporarily because uh, the chiffon tends to move around a bit. Right, the next bit is a little bit difficult to explain, but what you're going to be doing is pull the whole sleeve through the cuff and we're going to line up both of the seams on the cuff and on the sleeve and then what you're going to be doing is um, gathering up the sleeve to the halfway point exactly like we did the top, top part of the sleeve and we're going to fit that into the cuff. Now that the cuff has been sewn onto the sleeve we're now going to turn the cuff the right way Now we're going to turn the whole sleeve inside out. Like so. And what we're going to do now is at the cuff where you've got your crease line there. Like that. Then on the inside going to tuck all of that seam into your cuff and we're going to make 
a little C. And then it's going to be hand sewn to where the stitching is. 